Hello and welcome to a new episode of GTA Series Videos Tips and Tricks. I'm GTA and I'll be your host for this series in collaboration with GTA Series Videos. Today we'll focus our attention on the new Finance of Fantasy DLC and to be more precise on how to make the most money possible with the new Offices and Warehouses features. The Finance of Fantasy DLC did not only bring a host of new vehicles and clothing, it also brought the introduction of Offices and Warehouses. With Offices and Warehouses you can play a variety of buy and sell missions which can make you some serious profits. Before talking about money, crates, missions and so on, we want to make sure that we will not consider a human factor in this video. In other words, we will consider everything except the persistence of other people inside your lobby with the hobby of blowing things up or just being a dick in general. We won't do that because this is something we can't calculate. Lobbies on PS4 are different from Xbox One and for sure both are a lot different than lobbies on PC. It would all come down to luck and comes down to finding the right session. You could keep searching for an empty lobby or find a session where everyone just minds their own business. If you're in console it can be a lot easier because of free aim. Free aim typically is not very populated making it easier to find peaceful lobbies. It is something we cannot calculate or even think about if technically having other players in your lobby is what Rockstar Games wants. The desire is clear due to the fact that you cannot start missions or even buy a warehouse in any lobby except for a public one. But there's more, from the global signals to the high demand cash bonus. The global signal is the moment where your special cargo will be visible to all players. In other words, the moment where they can destroy your shipment. The less crates the CEO buys, the more time you will have without being visible in the lobby as soon as you recover the cargo. For the daredevils out there, there's a high demand cash bonus. This is a bonus that the CEO will receive when he sells one or more crates in a public lobby. This bonus scales by the number of players in the session during the sale and the amount of special cargo being sold. To make things easier, all you need to know is that this bonus is 1% of the income for each enemy in your session when you make the sale. This does not include people that are a member of your organization. For example, if you sell a single $10,000 crate and there is only one enemy inside of your lobby, you'll gain 100 bucks more. Not interesting? Well, let's say that you'll be able to sell the entire amount of a large warehouse in a lobby of 20 enemies. You'll receive a bonus of $444,000. <laughs> now you're listening, right? We won't judge Ruxus' intention and idea to keep this content only available in public lobbies because being able to do this in private lobbies would make everything easier, maybe too much. Sure, buying and selling goods in public lobbies makes everything a lot more intense and exciting, but with people not really caring about the fact you only get $2000 and a little bit of ammo for destroying crates, the risk is simply too high. I mean, I don't have to be a genius to figure out that you're not looking forward to lose $666,000 that you invested in your full large warehouse full of cargo. The game itself can also steal cargo from you. When you have a full warehouse, it is possible that a random event will trigger where you have to defend your property. Your assistant will give you a call and let you know that there's a break-in in one of your warehouses and that you have to go over there as quick as possible and make sure that the thieves don't steal all your cargo. While you're defending the warehouse, there will be a bar telling you how much merchandise you have left inside and how many enemies there are remaining at the bottom right corner of your screen. You enter the bar, the more goods you lost. If the bar with the cargo runs out, you have lost everything inside the warehouse and all you have left is your tears. Because your tissues got stolen as well. Shit! Major write down, boss! We lost a lot of stock! I'll be on these monitors and I'll let you know as soon as someone tries that again. But you know, even if the players are fine, and not crazy, even if the events like these never happen, even if the missions are easy because no enemies are there to kill, there's always the normal people of Los Santos who will have some fun with you. There are a lot of players who are asking Rockstar to change the idea and make this content available everywhere. And maybe Rockstar will change it in the future, but this is unlikely. Another big request is to lower down the stopping power of the NPCs that you have to face, because at the moment, oh boy, they are definitely overpowered. Something that will probably change are the payouts for the associates. In other words, the guys that the CEO can hire to be protected and help during missions. At the moment we're doing this video, the payout for the associates are just not fair. After joining the organization, an associate will receive a wage every 15 minutes that starts from $5,000 and can reach a maximum of $10,000. The raising depends on the ability to defend the CEO and complete missions with success. After every mission completed, the payout will be raised by $500, but if your CEO dies, your payout will be lower by $250. 
When the CEO buys crates and takes the goods safely to the warehouse with the help of the associates, they won't get any money. And to be fair, neither does the CEO. He's the one that pays a fund for everything, from the crates, to the office, the warehouses, the vehicles that can be spawned through the interaction menu, and so on. The big problem comes when the CEO decides to sell the merchandise that is inside the warehouse. If he sells everything and makes a profit of $100,000, the associate will get a maximum of $10,000, and that's it. If he sells everything for $500,000, guess how much the associate will get? $10,000 maximum. And if he sells everything for one or even two million, and yes, that is possible, he guessed it. $10,000 at most. Is this fair? Well, it could be. But it doesn't appear okay at all to players, and it's something that Rockstar can easily change. From paying the associates every time the CEO safely takes the crate inside the warehouse, to letting the CEO decide to split the profit with his actual associates when he starts to sell the cargo. And these are just a couple of possibilities. Let's move to the game and allow us to make a little introduction on how everything works. After buying an office and you register it as a CEO, you can reach your computer and buy up to five warehouses. There are three different types of warehouses. Small, medium, and large. The amount of crates you can store in each type of warehouse is 16 inside the small warehouse, 42 inside the medium warehouse, and 111 in the large warehouse. As you can see if you check their video on all offices and warehouses interiors, there's no difference in the interior of the offices. So be smart and buy the one you want, but aim at the lower price if you want to make a profit as soon as possible. Once a warehouse is bought, the CEO can start doing buy missions that allow him to collect crates and place them inside of the warehouse to later sell them. One mission normally takes 5 to 7 minutes and once you complete a mission you have a cooldown of 5 minutes. That cooldown can be avoided if you buy more than one warehouse. If something goes wrong and you'll take more than 50 minutes, the assistant will message you telling you to get back to the warehouse, giving you only 5 more minutes to deliver the remaining crates. If you won't do that, you'll fail the mission and only keep the crates that you picked up. There are two main categories that can be named Entire Cargo and Splitted Cargo. The difference is that all the missions of the first category will maintain the cargo in a single vehicle. All the crates are located in a single vehicle and one guy can bring the goods to the warehouse while the second category missions will always feature a split cargo. If the CEO bought more than one crate, he needs one guy for each crate or he has to go back and forth to the warehouse because the player can only carry one single crate at a time. With that said, these are the type of missions you will face in the first category. The easiest ones are the missions where all you have to do is to reach the cargo, get inside a vehicle and take it to the warehouse. Another easy one is when the seller got spooked and you just have to go to the fallback location and retrieve the vehicle. In ambush you'll see the cargo surrounded by cops or gangs that will make you move as soon as you try to collect the cargo. Kill them all before getting in the vehicle and if you're having troubles with the cops, ask Lesser for help. In hold up the cargo is near two gang groups. You can kill all of them and retrieve the cargo or wait a bit and let them do most of the job and then steal the cargo when the survivors try to escape. It can also happen that the police will find your cargo and in this case they will bring the vehicle back to the police compound Clear the area, take the vehicle outside, and again, call Rester to remove the wanted level. In Product Intercepted, a gang has stolen your cargo and you have to retrieve it from an area filled with enemies. Most of the time a buzzard can easily clean up the area, but do be careful you don't blow up the cargo. Another type of mission is Seize Cargo. In this mission, the police or third party takes your crates and you have to retrieve them. Normally all you have to do is stand in front of the vehicle and shoot the driver, and then take the van back to your warehouse. In Take Out the Targets first, the seller has a problem that he wants to be resolved before giving you the location of the cargo. It could happen that sometimes someone will take us for a ride. To retrieve it, we have to reach the vehicle shown on the minimap and check if the cargo is loaded inside the van or not. If not, we have to leave the vehicle and reach another one. This is a mission that can change when you select to buy one, two or three crates. The more crates you buy, the more vehicles will appear on the map. Like the time I explained before, there's also a mission where the cargo has been stolen by someone and to retrieve it you have to use Trackify, because their position doesn't appear on the minimap. Again, once you reach the vehicle you have to check inside if the cargo is in the van, and if not, you have to find a new one. And that is all there is for the missions of the first category. But as told before, there are also some missions where the cargo will be divided into two or three different crates. Obviously this happens if the CEO bought a two or three crate shipment. 
In Drop Zone you have to reach an area and throw a flare inside the yellow marker on the minimap to allow the settler to drop their cargo near you. There are no enemies but normally the drop areas are far from the warehouses and there's also a big risk in keeping the crates outside if you don't have one or more associates. A little spooky is the mission that involves some blood traces that you have to follow. There's nothing to be scared of because it's an easy mission where you just have to check the area, find the crates and take them back to the warehouse. Sometimes it happens where you have to reach the crash site controlled by the police. This is a mission where it's super easy to destroy a crate if you use your busted missiles, so avoid to do that and always face the police on foot, clean the area and then call last to shake off the cops. In Take Out the Teeth, as soon as you reach the vehicle where it's supposed to be, you'll see three enemies running away on foot from the area. All you have to do is kill them, take the crates and bring them to the warehouse. And last but not least there are the missions that involve vehicles to be used or taken down. The easiest of this category is where some thief inside a frogger takes your cargo. But again, the more crates you buy, the more froggers that you need to take down. Another mission that involves helicopters is when your cargo is being taken by Meriwether and is transported inside of a Valkyrie. First of all, don't go too near the Valkyrie because the enemies can snap your head off your body from miles away. Align the Valkyrie and take it down with a couple of RPG shots or missiles from your buzzer. And as soon as the Valkyrie blows up, one or more Meriwether mercenaries will appear parachuting to the ground. The easiest way to take them down is to use your buzzer as a weapon. Not the weapons of the buzzer, but when they're moving from the air to the sea, give them a little bit of a love tap with your rotor wings. Moving on from air to sea, sometimes your assistant will tell you to reach a dinghy because the sailor is on international waters. Again, enemies will be on the side and they will be waiting for you with their guns ready to fire. So avoid the dinghy and use the buzzer to blow them up, making this mission a lot easier and you don't have to waste time using the bow to recover the crate. Simply fly over them and you'll be able to collect them all. Just be careful you don't go for diving lessons. If you do, simply kill yourself from the interaction menu and you'll be able to spawn in a sea shark. Selecting one, two or three crates doesn't change the type of mission, you have to face them all sooner or later anyway. Obviously the more crates the CEO buys, the more time you will need to complete the missions where the cargo is divided if you are playing solo. Also, when the CEO chooses to buy a single crate, the mission will be easier because it involves less enemies, fans to check and things like that. The global signal gives the player more time before being shown to the lobby. As soon as he gets the cargo, he'll have 40 seconds to bring a single crate to the warehouse without being shown to all the enemies. The time where the cargo is invisible will be lower to 20 or 5 seconds when the SEO buys 2 or 3 crates. Sometimes your assistant will call you to tell you that there's a special item available on the market that will cost more money to be bought but also grant a bigger profit. These special items are unique objects that sometimes will appear to be available. It is not something that will appear after a specific number of crates bought or sold, it's just a random event that's triggered by the game. There are six different special items. An ornamental egg, a large diamond, a rare hide, which is the Bigfoot skin, a rare pocket watch, a golden minigun, and a rare film reel. Missions involving special items are the same as explained before, with the difference being that even if it's just a single crate, the mission will still be as hard as it involves three crates. So more enemies, vehicles to be checked, and so on. After you retrieve the cargo and take it to your warehouse, that the special item will be treated differently than normal crates. You'll have a specific offer to sell the object, and you can sell it at the same time as a normal crate. When you choose to sell a special item, you have to face a normal selling mission involving a Brigade, Tug, Cuban 800, or a Titan. So how can a CEO make money? Well, after buying this stuff, you will have to sell it. Exactly like there is different missions to buy crates, there's also different missions where you decide to sell them. And like in the first case, there's a cooldown for the selling missions. Only one every 30 minutes. First of all, remember to go to the area where you can upgrade your delivery vehicles and upgrade them all. It's another $1,250,000 to spend, but it will make your vehicles more armored and faster. Once you did that, you are ready to sell, and once you start the mission, you have 30 minutes to complete it. Depending on how many crates you're selling, you might need help from a single or a couple associates. Might need, because it could happen that your cargo will be divided in two or three vehicles. You can still deliver the goods to the first vehicle, go back for the second one, deliver the goods, and then go back for the third. 
There are different types of selling missions, not as much as the buy-in, but still some. When the seller wants the cargo to be loaded in the brigade, you have to take one of three brigades to a single location, more drop-off areas, or even a hidden area on the minimap that you have to find using Dragify. If the game takes you away from the ground and up in the sky, it will require you to fly one or two airplanes, which is either the Titan or the Cuban 800. In both cases, you will have to take your airplane all around San Andreas to reach different drop-off areas or land your airplane in a specific location that unfortunately is controlled by enemies. If this is the case, land your plane out of the range of the enemies, take them out and then fly your plane to the destination area. The last option is selling your cargo by sea. In this case, everything will be loaded on a single tug. If this happens to you, there are two types of missions you will face. In the first case, you'll be ambushed at the docks, clean up the area, and then get aboard of the tug to drive to the destination. The other mission is that will face enemies apart from sea sharks that you have to kill before reaching the drop off area. So how much can the CEO actually make when he sells his merchandise? Will the profit be more if you sell some crates after every 30 minutes, or wait until you fill up your warehouse? Let's break down the numbers. One thing you have to keep in mind is that the laptop in the warehouse shows the total amount you'll get, this being cost and profit combined. If you were to fail the sell mission for the full large warehouse, you won't lose $2,220,000. You will only lose $666,000. One thing that needs to be clear is that everything in this DLC is running on risk. The missions are not intended to be like heists where the host has to pay for the organization of the heist, but then surely will get back his money. The missions are not missions with a reward, but with a potential reward. At the end of the game, after spending for example $666,000 to fill up a large warehouse, you can lose all your investments if someone blows you up when you're trying to deliver your merchandise, and in that case, there is no reward at all. No money no objects, no bonus, or anything else. So technically the most profit possible thanks to this DLC comes when you fill up a large warehouse by completing 111 buy-in missions and then start the selling missions with all your cargo in a public lobby with 29 enemies in order to have the maximum high demand cash bonus possible. In this extreme rare case you'll bring home $2,641,800. So in short, if you want to make some serious money, then you have to invest some serious money as well. This way of money making is for those who want to invest their time by becoming someone who runs the town. It feels great, but if you're looking for the fastest way to make cash, this is not it. You can easily set aside a few minutes of your time and slowly fill up your warehouse when pretty much making a savings account for a rainy day. And that was it for this Tips and Tricks episode. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching from me, GTA Man, and the GTA Series Videos crew, and we hope to see you next time.